work that I've done is around engaging with the communities the way they want to be engaged with. It's not going into a community as an expert, it's actually working with the community, finding out what their protocols are, what, what, how they would like to engage in projects. But centre to that, working with the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Natural Disaster Resilience Project, we've come up with a, a model of yarning which I think is very respectful. And in Indigenous communities, it is about who are you, where you, where you come from, and where have you been, and what's important to you. When you work in Indigenous communities, it's, it's, it's very important to build those relationships and be in presence before you actually do the projects, to build that respect, to be, to be respectful of the culture, the country. If we go back to our banking session earlier, what kind of statements were we talking about? Was it, I can't because... He said, she does, he's a bitch, she said this, this stands in my way. There is no dot, dot, dot. We need more of dot, dot, dot. Is that, do they come out of your mouth? Is that what we're talking about as well? Yeah. Yep. I do it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's important to recognise that often we're attributing the blame externally, which is fine, because as, as Terry said before, these are very real constraints. They are very real problems that we have to face and we have to find ways around it in order to work effectively and have the impact and create the change we want. It's the real problem that I'm just too tired and I don't want to argue with it. It's the problem that I don't actually care enough about my job to want to argue or find different ways or I don't care about that impact. There's a problem that actually lies with me and the way I interact with that barrier. What are our strategies for actually shifting our perspective? So we can recognise what the barrier is, we can recognise whether we should put our energy into it, so we can even try and think creatively. Because as soon as you judge that, you judge the situation, you stop all creativity. And you think, I'm black and white, I'm right, she's wrong, this is that. What do you go from there? You can't go anywhere. If you have a, a really healthy sense of respect and pride in who you are and the way you are, then you're able to respond to those things in the best possible way that's actually going to stop them from becoming that problem. One of the things we're talking about is knowing when to put your energy into a barrier and knowing when to, to not, to just say, you know, that's a barrier and it's stupid, it's unfair, it's ridiculous. I could fight it, but that would be to take my energy away from something. I came to really appreciate and value the experience of each and every individual. The detailed experience of everybody. Everybody's specific story, the projects they're working in, where they've come from, what their journey has been like. I think it's something that gets talked about a lot, but it's only, I find for me, through days like yesterday where we're listening to some amazing projects that are happening, and we're talking to some amazing people in this room, that you come to appreciate the real value of that. And I think for me, it's those stories that help me to translate theories and models and approaches to working into something that I can do something with. So. I want you to, um, to, in partners, tell your story um, in five minutes. When you tell your story, I, I want you to... What's, what's your story of engagement? How are you a shaper of your time? How are people going to look back on what you're doing? What is your impact? Because what we want to get out of this session is to be able to share the stories that we're told and pick out the key lessons from that. The title was uh, Tools, Tips and Approaches for Projects with Zero Dollars and Radical Agendas. So it was really about identifying all the kinds of freely available online and offline tools that people can use when they're getting their projects started or to help scale them up. Uh, it was also sharing a lot of the processes that we use. We started off with an asset-based approach, um, mapping people's gifts of their head, hand and heart using an ABCD, asset-based community development approach. So people got a real sense of how to actually get the most out of people and trust um, people who were previously strangers. And then went back into some of my experiences and feedback on how to manage volunteers well, how to uh, run a very lean administration for a startup project. I've been inspired by everyone's passion. Um, and I've been inspired by new ideas that um, have yeah, they've extended me, so I'm going back with ideas about what I can do now that I didn't have before. This workshop um, allows um, participants an opportunity to take their own experiences and bring them into the workshop as a foundation for rethinking their own practice in the field around notions of leadership. So, um, what it means for them, how they practice it, what influences their decisions, um, but more from their experiential point of view, so that we are looking at an individual perspective before we draw on theory.
and literature. The thing that really stuck in my head was something that part of being a leader is about being fully present and that really struck a chord with me because I think like many people uh, take on a lots of different projects which I think is really good but what I, what I realise that unless I can be fully present and committed to everything that I'm doing then I shouldn't do it, that I'm doing myself and everyone else a disservice so that was really important, I really learned from that. Community engagement is a style, it's a way of working that many people have, some don't but there are people who identify um, as having this passion. It's a way of being that I don't believe can be switched on and off. It's the way we are, it's the way we work. And today I just want to share a few of those stories um, to give an insight into what I've discovered about um, working in this way. Rose Virginia Pelletier, the builder of this tunnel, had the passion and compassion from a inclusive society in her blood. And because of her passion, was regarded as somewhat of a pest, especially by the local bishops. In her day, the order was semi-enclosed, and that means that they stayed mostly in the convent and they worked with the women that came to them that were marginalised. <coughs> and one day she was offered a monastery building across the road from her own, and that was to expand her work with women. And the bishop suddenly thought, ah, this is a really good thing. We can control this woman by saying, no, you can't take on that property. No, you can't expand because you're an enclosed order, therefore you can't cross the road. Barrier number one. So they said no to her, you couldn't, she couldn't cross the road, she wasn't allowed out of, the, out of the gates. So being the sort of woman she was, she was not going to accept this. Um, so she gathered her community around her and she was also a woman who networked a lot. So she had a lot of um, people who donated money, time, energy, etc. So she said to them, we have this problem, we've got this great building across the road, we can expand, but I can't cross the road. The bishops have told me I can't go over the road. So they set about, and this is really true, this tunnel actually exists. Many of my friends have walked the tunnel. Um, it was built in the 1800s, and it was built by this woman and her sisters and the community. And they, at night, the nuns would get out there and they would um, dig away at this tunnel. During the day, the men would come and take all the rubble away. Soon, she had a tunnel that went under the road. And so she was able to use her property. This symbol of the tunnel has become a powerful image for me. Um, and it holds a lot of the elements about and steps of community engagement that, that I, I, I work with. You know, you have this passion for an idea. You have the vision and the commitment. You find the alternate way. You engage partners. You complete the task and you have the satisfaction that you've done it anyway. Key highlights for me were firstly that we were reminded of the importance of using creativity and creative arts practices in the work that we do. Creative Arts opens up new spaces in which we can look at new ways of working, possibilities in ways communities can work together. It often assists us to get around the traditional barriers of language or, and it helps us to look at new ways to engage those who traditionally are disengaged in the process. Sometimes creative processes just simply bring joy and inspiration to a group that's reached a dead end in the work that they're doing or feel disconnected from the broader discussion. Secondly, there was a strong theme of working on the edge in the work that we do. For many of us, the work is around the margins and working with people in the margins. And there was an important discussion about, do we continue that work and how does that impact on the more broader community? How do we bring some of those learnings across? How important is it to stimulate and keep working on the edge and exploring new models of engagement? The third focus for me was around new forms of media and new ways to share ideas and practices. So we explored that in terms of how do we collaborate in different ways together. So there was collaboration came out of this symposium between researchers and practitioners, between different community organisations, between artists and workers. So that it opens up a new set of work that we may be able to share as we're going forward and a way in which communities can work differently and share strategies. And some of that will be using new technologies, others not. But at its heart, I think the key learning we had was we were reminded of the importance of values, narrative and place in the work that we do. Once again, it was important to focus on the local, that we were all reminded that we need to start small, work smart and strategic. We need to learn to tell good stories and to approach the work with focus on values and good processes. For me, as we move into planning for Innovate 2012, we're going to document those collaborations, we're going to look at new models to move forward with, and we're going to try and bring that together in an even more exciting and unconference way. I'm going to take away a bit of a renewed um 
commitment to my business because it's been really challenging and um, there have been many times when I've wanted to sort of bail out and um, opt for maybe some job security and um, superannuation and things like that. Uh, so it's, it's renewed my um, ambition and my uh, belief that I'm doing the right thing, you know, with my career and um, uh, commitment to really take back all these new ideas to regional Australia. I've met amazing people, such inspiring, positive people that are doing fantastic things in their own community. And what they really carry for me is that stuff, um, there's, there's a word we use in our organisation, audacity. So it's being audacious and being courageous and I think all of the people who've come to innovate um, definitely embody that um, and carry through that integrity of it's not just about the change I'm making in the world but the change I'm making within myself too. I want to extend my heartfelt thanks to the crew at Innovate Symposium because they just helped me have an epiphany. I, I know what I need to do to, to break through my limiting beliefs. I know these things intellectually, but I'm not actually embodying them. And to, to have that space just then where I, I thought about what these strategies are, I, I know what they are, and now it's just a choice that I need to make of actually taking action, taking 10 minutes every evening to meditate, to do my envelope exercise where I write down all the things that I'm grateful for, what was good about the day, what I can improve from that day, and get in touch with my mastermind group once a week to talk about my goals and ask them to hold me accountable to it. So I, I now know those things and I'm now committing to take action with those things. Stop wasting time.